Dear all, welcome to this new episode of the Katia TV, this time on the very strategic topic of 3D Experience Katia Connected Engineering. Nowadays, there is an increased complexity to generate different products with a lot of different variants, and the processes and the ecosystems are more and more complex, with more demands on speed and price coming from OEMs and customers. Facing those trends, you need the right function, productivity, confidence, collaboration, and trust that you will get the right design until the very end. With 3D Experience Katia, you will be able to do anything you need. Collaborate and share on a 3D Experience platform, working together on the same data, install and maintain ongoing projects without administration complexity, thanks to the cloud, succeed in creating complex design and high quality complex mechanical shapes, improve the quality of your products, while helping users to reach manufacturability criteria with best compromise in surface quality, optimize your manufacturing process by compensating forming deformation to bring virtual definition close to real life definition, capitalize, automate, and reuse with Katia Knowledgeware applications, capture your knowledge and know-how and reuse it where it can be done by the experts and designers, access the right information directly in 3D for better compliance with regulations and standards, Set in motion and validate your ideas by designing your products in motion with kinematics and structural insights. To conclude, 3D Experience Katia is the best productive user experience you can ever dream of. This is the main differentiator of 3D Experience Katia compared to the previous version of Katia and to the competition. So, ready as a Katia V5 user to jump in 3D Experience Katia? Follow our Katia subject matter expert, Daniel Pizak, with an exceptional Katia TV with values and demonstration. As usual, the Katia TV webinar will be held here in the post where you are right now in our Katia user community, and it will give you the capacity to interact in live with our subject matter experts throughout the chat. So don't hesitate to watch the webinar and don't hesitate to ask, to ask questions. We wish you a very good day. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Pizak. I am very happy to be with you for this um, webinar uh, regarding 3D Experience Katia, Connected Engineering. Um, the main idea here is to introduce to some of you, maybe um, uh, disclose some nice uh, secrets of 3D Experience Katia for some of you too, um, regarding um, the mainly the user interface of Katia, v Katia 3D Experience or 3D Experience Katia. Um, to design much more efficiently, and you will see it's much more easy uh, than some other uh, CAD modeler. And uh, this is an episode, the, the episode one. We will have, we will make more episodes in the future, um, mainly focus on assembly modeling or some other nice capability of 3D experience Katia. And I hope you will enjoy that. So it, it lasts around 30 minutes, not more. Let's start. So the idea is to show you how, if you were a 3D Experience Katia user, um, you, you have to work. What are the steps to design this particular assembly? It's a braking system, braking caliper system. And uh, at the end, how you can take into account some um, data that you receive from your supplier or maybe your customer, which are not maybe perfect, and how to clean and to um, take into account some design changes. Okay, So it's a little bit of part design for those who are um, familiar with Katia, and a little bit of generative shape design for those, again, who are familiar with Katia. Let's start by designing this assembly. So very first thing, I am in Katia assembly design. So you can check here the workbench, the app I am using, and you can see that in 3D Experience Katia, I can use very, very advanced rendering uh, display, uh, still with a very, very good response time, because this helps you to understand better uh, your design uh, context, okay? And you can see that I will use, uh, for this particular presentation, almost not at all the spec tree that maybe you are familiar with, what we call the specification tree, where the history of the design is, is uh, shown. Um, I will not use icons which are spread out all over my screen because the idea is to keep most of the display for the 3D, not for commands. But I use something which is called the action pad, where 
you can gather all uh, the comments that you are mainly using during a design. It can be comment from part design, which is a solid modeling from Katia, or comment from generative shape design, which is a surface modeling from Katia, or maybe other apps. And you can gather them in, in an action pad. They are default action pad, by the way. And you can either dock them, like what is done here. I docked them on the right side, upper right side of my screen. Or those action pads can be popped up uh, just where my mouse is located, just by hitting um, the, the B key on the keyboard. It's not what I will use. I will use the docking capability of, of Katia. Let's start. So this is my, my motorbike. And I want to work on this particular braking system, the brake caliper. Okay. First thing, I will select visually my context. I will define my working context. And you will see very also nice capability of 3D experience Katia, which is a display of what I don't need in a ghost way. Okay, so what, what you see in dimmed or transparent white is in fact in a ghost mode. But I, at, at least I know where am I in my assembly, my full, full assembly. And I can, for example, add a new view in my um, working environment. Uh, the view, for example, of this context can be shift to another screen. You know, most of, our, of CAD users today are mainly use two screens. Um, if you are using 3D experience CAD, you use the two screens either to display, for example, the assembly and, and your part or some menus, because you can also dispatch some uh, menus in other screens. So it's very, very flexible. So let's see what it, it, it does. So here I, I, I display, for example, my starting point. I start by defining a skeleton, which is a very traditional way of working with Katia. And of course, I can see the skeleton at the part level here on the left side of the screen or at the as assembly and context level on the right part of the screen. And there will be a permanent dual display of what I am designing. So let's start the design. Maybe you did not see that, but I click on a plane and automatically Katia prompt me, what do you want to do with the plane? Probably you want to do a sketch. And I say yes. So I don't have to go and click on the sketch icon, which might be somewhere, maybe in my action pad or maybe not. You see here, sketch. Now I'm defining my sketch. And all my comments of the sketcher are also popping up um, in front of me, close to my mouse location and my, my click, uh, and proposing to me some comments depending on what I clicked. This is what we call the contextual immersive comments. Very nice capability. So I start my, my sketch. As you see, so here I can also use the, the menus or the comments which are in the action bar here on the lower level of the screen. This is typical design of my, uh, my sketch. I define some constraints, some offsets. Um, I define some fillets. I will also um, mirror this uh, half sketch because I would like to have the complete sketch. And, and you see, I do not click. My mouse, my, my mouse mileage is very limited, OK? Here we go. I sketch, I, I do the mirror of this area. And now I leave the sketch, OK? Of course, you can see that on the right side, you see exactly what I did in, at the sketch level. Now I click on the sketch. The sketch was selected. So Katia proposed to me, ah, you have selected a sketch. Maybe you want to make a pad, which makes sense. Yes, I want to make a pad. And then I just need to select the direction of the, of the extrusion and the value, the thickness of the pad. And I, type it, I directly type in the command. And Katia create a feature pad in the spec tree. Okay. You could have done exactly the same with a traditional, let's say, Katia V5 way, where you click on command, the command pad, you have a dialog box popping up, you enter values, and then the feature pad is uh, aggregated in the spec tree. But here it's much faster. It's here, here you see here the pad dialog box that you can use if you want to add advanced more details in your pad uh, feature. Here we go. I click on this plane. I accept the sketch. Here I just project an edge of this uh, newly created pad into the plane. And I just add some constraints on my sketch to fix it, to dimension it. And I will create 
as I did earlier, another pad. This is the, the value of my uh, fillet. Here's a sketch. As the sketch is aggregated or was constructed on a face of a solid, now I have two options. Do you want to create a pad or do you want to create a pocket? I create a pad, I select the direction and the thickness very easily. No dialog box, just everything is done directly on the graphics in 3D. I continue the design of my sketch and my um, solid. I am here in the sketcher of part design. I create some offsets. You see, it's very simple, very straightforward. At any time, if you need more advanced capability, you can use the advanced capability of your action pad. You can also hide the action pad. Here, I just create a pad to remove some material inside this uh, block. And you see here on the screen why I did that, because I wanted to take some <laughs> into account the break disk itself. Makes sense. So it's why the context is very important. You never design a part alone, okay? It's always inside a context within an, a given assembly. Here, by just clicking on a face and, a, and this line, I can create a hole because I, the input were the direction of the hole and the, um, the, the starting face. I just select regular holes. Here we go. Very nice capability also of 3D Experience Cutia is that I can change at any time what we call ambience. You will see what I mean. An ambience can be, for example, a, a dark blue background. Traditional way of working with some CAD tools. But I can have a more fancy way. Maybe my part is designed inside a given uh, context. You can have, define your own, um, let's say, context. And I can come back to the basic, which is white in this particular case. Now that um, I'm, I'm OK with that, I will just um, erase my context view and just work with the, uh, let's say, design view. Here, I can at any time undock some commands and dock them where I want on the screen. It's very simple. So you see here the refine command with the chamfer fillets. I can add as many commands where I want. And those, those menus can be also attached to another screen, for example, if you have two screens. And of course, if I am a little bit messy, I can come back to the predefined position of those um, action bars. Here, I create now um, a body, a new body, which is my brake pad. Because you will see that in this particular way of working, I will just, as a concept level, just work in, in part design, in one part, okay? And create multiple bodies, which will be, in fact, my future parts within a given assembly. And you will see how easy we can create from a part with bodies, an assembly with parts. Let's have a look, but let's first continue the job. Here we go. I create a sketch. I design my sketch. You know, I, I guess now you are familiar with that. It's very easily done. And I will just create um, another um, the shape of my pad. You see, as I click on my shape, I can create a pad. Here we go. And this is in my brake pad, another body. So I continue the job. I create the exact brake pad after having created the pad support. So I have now three bodies, but I also created the cylinders, which will push on the pad support and the pin which is guiding the pad support to push the, the brake pad. Okay, those are all my bodies. Now I just want to start to just detail or refine a little bit more the, the, the main housing of the brake caliper. But before that, I can use very simply wall thickness analysis. I am in part design. And here I just detect that there are some area we are a little bit too thin, okay? No problem. I will just work and turn on a clipping. This is also very cool in, in Kutia, in 3 Experience Kutia, the clipping tool. So you select a clipping plane. And this clipping view is permanent. Okay, You can continue to work 
at any time with this clipping view. Quite useful in this particular case. Of course, at any time, you can also turn off the clipping view. Here we go. Now I just zoom in. Something very important, as you see here, I click on these faces and I selected these small prints, footprints um, icon. And this is in fact a way to navigate with the parents and the children of this feature or this, this face. And here, one of the um, parents is a sketch. So I can see that I can automatically display the sketch in 3D. I'm not forced to go to the 3D plane which was containing the sketch. And I can change, for example, this uh, radius 14 to 16 to just make it thicker. Here we go. I will turn off the clipping because now I'm fine. And I just double check my design by running another wall thickness analysis. Looks good to me. There is no more red area with thin area in this portion of the solid. Now I use another command, which is called remove face. It is in my action pad because I quite using this a lot, at least Daniel as, as a user. So I take those faces, remove, and the solid is updated accordingly. And I will continue the job. Here we go. And I will add some holes, OK? So after having adding a, a small pad, I will first start to create a fillet. You will see how easy it is to create a fillet. I just click on an edge. As I click on an edge, the fillet command is prompted. I will use the same fillet on the two edges. And you can see I have a dynamic display of the fillet and I can change quickly the value of the fillet to the one I was looking for. No dialog box popping up, fooling the, fooling the, filling the screen with, with something that um, hide the 3D um, to my view. Now let's go and continue the job. And what I'm doing here right now is just cutting this piece in two symmetrical pieces. Okay, so it's very simple. I copy paste my body uh, as result in with link in a part. Uh, and then we cut out the first part and cut on the other side the other part. So I will have a lower um, brake caliper and an upper brake caliper, two bodies, which are symmetrical. OK, so this is a brake caliper body, lower side, and the brake caliper upper side body. Here we go. Looks fine to me. And in this particular situation, I will add the holes. OK, so here I select a face. I select a point. So I will create a, a hole, which is a up to last hole. OK, with a given diameter, 6. Here we go. I will do the same at this particular location, at this point here. Perfect. And I will do another one here at this particular location. I'm almost fine, but as you can see, this hole is not very good. OK, so I would like to replace this hole by a counterboard hole, which is more uh, makes sense to add a counterboard here. OK, so I just select the hole, change the parameters, make a change, use a standard I would like to use for the because all, all those are uh, standardized, of, of course, the dimension and the fillets and all this stuff. And now this feature hole is quite complex. It has a lot of different attributes. And with a simple click, you will see. I will use a semantic painter. So I click on the hole. It's a feature hole. It works also on other feature of um, 3D Experience Katia part, part design. I have this semantic painter here. It's like if I was copying not the color, but the, the semantic, the feature parameters of this hole. And then I can drop the same parameters to the other holes in my pad. Here we go. Very, very simple, very, very useful. Looks nice to me. Uh, obviously, this part will be, uh, will be casted, so not milled. So now I start to enter into the detail, detail design of this part. Um, and I will just create some, some draft. 
So you can use a classical draft command um, if you are familiar with KTV5, uh, the draft command of KTV5, but it's very similar. So you select the face you would like to draft, you will select the pulling direction, the draft direction, you select the neutral surface and an angle. Here I will put five degrees or three degrees. There we go. Let's put three. This is my draft, but what is nice in 3D experience Katia is that we can do exactly the same for the complete part in one shot. It's called auto draft. So you select the auto draft command. You type in the same value, the, the angle, the pulling direction, and also you have to select the faces you do not want to be drafted. In my particular cases, all the holes. So I just select them. So those will not be drafted, but every other face will be drafted okay, in one shot, in one feature. Nice job. I have to do the same on the other direction. So select my angle, the same angle in this case, select my bring direction, opposite direction, of course. Uh, select the faces I don't want to be drafted. And of course, the parting element. Here we go. Simple clicks, one command, one feature. This is my parting element. Looks good to me. Nice job. OK. Just do a, a wall thickness analysis. Sorry, not a wall thickness, a draft analysis to check that everything's fine. OK, the drafts are on the right side. They have, they have the right angle, so perfect. And uh, to finish the job, I will use also um, use a magic command of uh, Katia, which is auto fillet, 3D experience Katia, auto fillet. Those fillets are not functional fillets. I just, just manufacturing fillet. I just want to put a fillet of one millimeter on every single sharp edge of this design. It's exactly what this command will do. But you have to select the faces you do not want to be filleted, obviously, or the holes in my cases. Everything else will be rounded. Again, one single feature. If you have to do the same job without this command, it's probably take you much more time than me. So I put a one millimeter fillet everywhere. The, the command has not been accelerated. It's really the, take, the time it takes to do. Here we go. And every single sharp edge has been rounded. So my part, my part is ready to be casted. Just to finish, I will add a small text, a small engraving. It can be an emboss, but here I will put an engraving. So it's also a capability which is um, available in 3D Experience Katia. You type in the text, you type, you select the font, you select the dimension, you position, and you constrain the, the text because this is a capability of the sketcher. So you have to position it versus, for example, an edge of a part. There we go. And then what I will do once the text is located at the right position, I will just project it and create, in fact, a small pocket. I could have created a pad if, if I wanted not an engraving, but a, a, an embossing. Here we go. Perfect. Good job. If I want to, for example, share with my suppliers, my colleagues, my customer, a nice, let's say, fancy view of this product, I can again change not the ambience, but the style of my display. For example, this type of display, or why not old fashioned stuff, but why not to show the, the, the part and maybe use it for a marketing purpose. Let's go back to the traditional design style. So I have my various elements, my various bodies for my assembly. And then I will use the magic command of 3D experience put here called distribute. If you look at this table, you will see all the content of the spec tree. All feature will be there. Of course, I don't want to distribute the skeleton or axis system or whatever. So I will just select the bodies. So I just select the bodies. So I will just remove some of the, of the feature. 
And in one command, Katia is creating an assembly, distributing in every single part all those bodies. It's very cool. If you have, again, to do that traditionally, it will take a little bit more time. So it's what you saw here was a very nice way of creating a, a 3D models and, and, and assemblies by just starting from a conceptual part because it's easy to modify. Um, if you do design change, it will be much more easier and faster to update and so on and so on. And then once I have my assembly, I can use, for example, a very nice capability, which is a symmetry um, uh, mirror or symmetry capability of, of um, assembly design, where you can select the part which have to be mirrored. Uh, either it's really a mirror part or the same part, but rotated and translated because it will be the same reference in the bill of material. And then I do for you, you saw for the cylinders, there are two symmetries uh, along two different planes. So very easily, you, you, you finalize your design of your assembly to make something uh, exactly matching your request. And we will finish the design of this assembly by adding some, what we call engineering connection to make a quick kinematic analysis of this assembly. Let's see, let's see how it works. So very easily, you can define constraints. Okay, for example, this is fixed. This is also fixed together. Okay, so you will see what 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 we are doing. Okay, the idea is that the cylinders which are inside this body are pushing the pad support, which is pushing the brake pad. Okay along the guide. So here, just by using, uh, again, the pop-up menu, uh, which are, again, popping up, sorry, <laughs> once I, I selected a face, I can select the type of, of uh, engineering connection I want, or let's say the, the type of connection I want between the parts. Okay, here, I will again fix them together. This one and this one fix them together, because one is pushing the other, stick to the other. Then I define, the um, just hide what I don't need, but I define, for example, a coincidence between this cylinder and the hole where it is uh, guided. So I select the, the, the face. I say coincidence with this axis, which is the axis of the hole. I do the same for the other cylinder. So, and as you can see, as I click on a cylindrical face, it created here a cylindric cylindrical connection. Okay. I continue the job. Because I have now to, to define the connection between um, the pins, which are guiding the, the two brake pad. So those are coincidence. But it's not only coincidence that I want, because otherwise I will slide on it. I will add another constraint, very, very, um, let's say, logical one. You will see which one. OK. Again, no big dialog box popping up, just clicking on the, on the 3D and selecting options. What I put here is, in fact, something different, is I will add a contact, OK, because, in fact, the, the cylinders are pushing and there is in contact with the pad. Okay? So once you select, for example, a, a, a contact on top of a cylindrical connection, it will convert, it will enrich the cylindrical definition and convert the cylindrical plus contact into a revolute connection. Okay? This is quite smart and quite nice. So you can easily define constraints between various parts inside your assembly. And what you will get for free is the kinematics. Compared to V5, where you define assembly constraints, and then you enter to another app called Kinematic, where you define the kinematic joints, in 3D Experience Katia, everything is done only in one shot. Okay? And then you just have to add, for example, an input. I will select what part is moving and for what is the magnitude of the motion of this part. And you can display it. So you really get kinematics for free when you are designing an assembly with 3D experience cut here. And of course, we can show this assembly uh, in motion. We can analyze the motion within the complete context 
of my braking system. Let's move it. Just move the mechanism. Here we go. So that's, that's it for my first part of this presentation. You saw how easily I could design not a simple part. There are drafts, there are a lot of fillets, there is some mechanism, there are connections, there are constraints, and it took me 17 minutes, okay? So not bad. Now, just to finish the presentation and this uh, webinar, I will show you a little bit more advanced capability, but more regarding geometry than pure mechanical design. Let's go. Typical scenario is, I receive a part from my supplier, which is this fork bracket, okay? So he sent me the part. It was um, this design here. And I want to convert Here we go. I want to check if this part is it's a new part. Uh, it's a new version of uh, the designs um, supplied by my customer or suppliers. And I, I, it, but very strangely, just a set of surfaces. It's not a solid. So maybe there was some issue during the conversion or maybe the data was not that good at the, at the input. So I will just try to join those set of surfaces. You can see there is a geometrical set for those who are familiar with Scutia. So I just join them. Okay, no, no problem. Looks like there is no problem. And then I will create a closed um, surface. So convert this set of surfaces, which are joined into a solid. Ah, there is an issue. Okay, you cannot create a solid out of that. Not a problem. So I will just now use a very nice command, which is in 3D Experience Cotia, which is called the local join. Okay, first of all, I just display where are the problems, okay? You can see here in green, there are some open, there are some gaps between the surfaces. So we cannot stitch them together at a given accuracy. Again, not a problem. Let's go and use this nice command called local healing. What it will do, it's very simple. It will just heal locally the surfaces. It will not touch the rest of the surfaces, just those one which need to be uh, put together. But maybe you can see there is, there is here a plane. I don't want the plane to be modified, okay? The plane is a plane, so I will keep, I will freeze the plane. So the plane will stay as a plane. So I freeze this, this uh, plane, planar surface, and I will just move the other one, okay? Now I will just add a joining a distance. Here we go. And if I create now um, my closed surface, to make a solid, voila, it's working fine. That's the very first uh, stuff you can do. The second stuff that you can do is that, okay, I receive a new version, I clean because there were some issues. Now I want to compare what has been modified between my previous version, the one I showed you there at the very beginning of the presentation, and this one that I just clean. So there is a nice command as well in 3D Expanse Katia called compare. So. I compare the first one with the previous one. And you can see here in the screen a, a special window where I can display the differences between the first part and the new version. And I can highlight if there are some differences and where are those differences. You can see here that there is a small pocket which has been added in one version versus the other. Okay. Now what is very nice is that I can automatically extract from the new version what needs to be added to the previous one okay i will extract just what is necessary i will keep the rest of the geometry so it's what we called here when we do the compute so i will just extract the faces which are different which is a big one and the small pockets here okay here we go i select these options and now you will see in the spec tree that I have some three geometrical set with what is identical between the two versions, what is specific to the first version, what is specific to the new version. I will just hide 
what is not uh, necessary. Just keep what has been changed. You see here in yellow. And what I will do, I will just sew this new surface or set of surfaces, which is a planar surfaces with the oblong, to the previous solid. So this is a sew command. And automatically, we create the update of the solid. Very nice capability. It helps a lot um, because sometimes the differences are not so obvious between one version of the sub model and the second version. And of course, I can work and check my part in my context. So that's it for me. The conclusion. First, I hope you understood that 3D Experience Cutia has a very intuitive user interface. You pick in 3D and you, you are guided. It's very effective, very few mouse clicks, very small mouse mileage. Don't go from, from one side to the other side of the screen and so on. And of course, and on top of that, you can even customize uh, more than what is proposed by default if you have very, very particular commands that you are using a lot. The display is very fast and high quality. And you have very advanced modeling capabilities, which is one of the richness of Cutia, but continue to be a richness of 3D Experience Cutia. So, and what are the benefits for you guys and ladies? <laughs> casual user, it's easy to use. So casual user do not spend a lot of time just to know where, what to do and so on and so on in front of the screen. Expert user are very productive because they don't spend too much time by opening, closing dialog box and just, just focused on the 3D and clicking on entities and Katia is popping up with the right commands. And for existing Katia V5 user, it's very simple to learn and it's very quick to master, okay? And we measured that the productivity when you are designing solids or surfaces can vary between 20 to 50 percent. So it's a great, great, great advantage to move from 3D experience Katia, or sorry, to go to 3D experience Katia, um, wherever you are starting from. Uh, and don't wait. Thank you very much for your attention.